I'm Mark Morial. I'm president of the National Urban League. Okay. Proud son of New Orleans. Yes. Lover of justice, freedom, and equality. Now, you were, are, were the mayor of New Orleans, from what I understand. I had a chance to serve as mayor of New Orleans from 1994 to 2002. Yes. It was an incredible experience. And there's really, I think, no greater experience in life than for your fellow citizens to choose you. Uh, to lead your community. So it was a great experience and I had a chance to really work with some fantastic people and make a difference uh, uh, for the city. Now your dad was the first African-American mayor of New Orleans. Like explain his My influence. father was yes. just uh, an incredible history maker and, and just a, a man, a giant of a man. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was also a giant of a man. But he was also only five feet six inches tall. Really? Yeah, but uh, he was a pioneer and a very passionate uh, civil rights lawyer. He not only served as the first black mayor of New Orleans, but he was also the first African American to serve in the Louisiana legislature. Wow. First African American to finish LSU law school. First African American to be elected as a juvenile court judge and appellate court judge. Mm -hmm. He did so incredible, so many incredible things. And you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, uh, he had a powerful influence on me and uh, my brother and three sisters, mm -hmm. all of us in one way, shape, or form are doing something related to public service. Okay. So uh, he and, and my mother were just a powerful, powerful, uh, two powerful role models. I've been waiting to meet someone from New Orleans. One of my favorite shows on HBO is The Treme. Have you seen Tremé, the show? I've seen the show. Many How do you pronounce time. it? Is it Treme or Treme? Treme. Treme. My brother's actually in that show from time to time. I love the show. Are you a big jazz fan? I'm a lover of jazz, yes. uh, and that show uh, is a an accurate portrayal mm -hmm. of New Orleans. HBO's done it right. Mm -hmm. uh, Wendell Pierce, who's a good friend, and so it's of, thumbs up from the mayor. Thumbs up. From, okay. Thumbs up, my man. Okay. On, on Treme, they've done a great job, and I wish the show would stay on forever. Now, I always used to watch the French Quarter and with the Mardi Gras. Now, I know you're married and everything, but back in the day, how did you get the beads from the young ladies in the French Quarter during Mardi Gras? Is that something that you have to actually be a part of man, the that's party? that's trade secrets, bro. I mean, come on, share a I little. I can't even talk about it, man. I can't talk about it because that camera, see that camera? Uh, the camera's rolling. You can't divulge. Uh, you know, interestingly about Mardi Gras and that tradition, you know, that tradition, is a relatively new tradition. When I say new, probably maybe 30, 35 years old. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes have a perception that that represents what Mardi Gras is. But you know, that's a tiny slice. What you see in the French Quarter is a tiny slice of Mardi Gras because Mardi Gras extends throughout the city and the entire region. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of it that's really just plain family-oriented fun. Now, if you want to go a little bit down the scale, gotcha. you can find that too. But if you don't want to uh, participate in that or see that and avoid that, last year, for example, mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I, along with our two youngest children, rode uh, in the Zulu Mardi Gras parade and had an opportunity to throw beads and coconuts and, and all sorts of things. I was able to serve as uh, one of the honorary grand marshals along with... Uh, Sorry about that. That's okay. That's cool. That's real TV. You got the TV up there. Is that little six and park? Is yes. That what it is? Yeah, okay. Yeah. They're looking good. Uh, now, another thing about New Orleans, are you, can you actually make gumbo? Are you, like, that's my favorite dish. I've attempted it up north. Let me tell you something, man. If you had a, a stove mm -hmm. and we could go down to the grocery store, we could make gumbo. Wow. Right here, right now. now no I recipe, need, anything? Man, let me tell you, just take me to the grocery. Yes. Now I need one big pot. Okay. Actually, I need two big pots. I need one pot for the gumbo. I need one pot for the rice. And uh, depending on what you have, you know, any type of vegetables or seafood, we could do it with chicken. We could do it completely meatless. I need a little hot sauce, but I know we can find it here in New York. Oh, we got it. You know, my uh, gumbo is a great dish because there's no one way yeah. to make gumbo. And everybody, if you ask any New Orleanian, who makes the best gumbo? You know what they're going to say? My mama. Mama, yeah. I met a young lady here. She was an intern. She was going to make gumbo. I said, no, I want gumbo from your mama. From your mama. Well, you know what? <laughs> mama could phone her, yes. email her, yes. text her the recipe, and she could roll. 
You know what? Come back again. I want to. I want to have pleasure, more conversation man. with you. Definitely Thank enjoy you. talking to Thanks. you. I want to learn more about New Orleans. Good. Look Appreciate forward to seeing you again. Good. Long live Novel Orleans. Take care. My pleasure. All right.